All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webcast on using NetSuite CRM with NetSuite ERP. My name is Joanne Casley, and I'm on the Inside Sales team here at GSI. I'm very pleased to welcome our presenter for today, Jennifer Sansky. Jennifer is an experienced business analyst and is a NetSuite consultant here at GSI. Before we get started today, I wanted to give you a chance to uh, review our safe harbor statement. All right, and now for a quick overview of the agenda for today's webcast, which will last about 50 to 55 minutes. First, we'll go over a couple of quick housekeeping items, then I'll provide a brief company overview before turning it over to Jennifer for the main presentation. At the end of the presentation, we'll go over our upcoming educational events and then wrap up with a question and answer session. If you would like to submit a question, you can do so through the questions panel, which is located at the bottom of the GoToWebinar console window, which should be on the right side of your screen. Please note that questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. If you would like to minimize your GoToWebinar console during the presentation, just click the red right-facing arrow key on the top left of the console. Now for a brief overview of GSI. GSI is a full-service consulting organization specializing in NetSuite and JD Edwards. We are an Oracle Platinum partner and we were founded in 2004. We now have over 100 employees. We have offices nationwide and have been recognized on the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing companies in the U.S. GSI specializes in project consulting, managed services, and cloud and hosting services. And all of our services are backed with a 100% guarantee. Now I would like to turn things over to Jennifer for our main presentation. Thank you so much, Joanne. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Joanne mentioned, I'm Jennifer Stansky, and I will be presenting the webinar this afternoon. I'm going to go ahead and show my screen. So can you guys see? Uh, yes, I can see your PowerPoint setup. Perfect. Okay, so before I get started in our CRM demo today, I'm just going to talk a little bit about NetSuite overall. Um, NetSuite is a fully integrated cloud ERP solution that gives real-time visibility across the entire business. So it allows companies to store all of their information in one location and with the relationship database structure, it allows views of the overall processes with easy generated dashboards, reports, and searches. And because it is cloud, it is available from any browser, so that's quite nice. It was also founded in 1998 as the first cloud ERP solution, which means it's been around for a while and it has the ability to just keep getting better, uh, not having to catch up to other softwares. NetSuite is a single data source, so as a company, there is one software to house all aspects of your business. Um, it makes analytics so much easier because it's one place to pull everything together. And less software obviously means less upkeep. Um, NetSuite is configurable and highly customizable to ensure it fits your business needs down to even terminology. And it's a SaaS model, software as a service, so it's hosted for you and you don't have to keep up with the servers in the office. The forms in NetSuite, as I mentioned before, are highly customizable. It's simple to create new fields, list and sub-tabs, and you can relate them throughout the entire organization on different forms. This means that NetSuite allows you to customize everything the way you want it. Analytics are obviously then very easy to run on anything that you put into the system. So what CRM really covers in NetSuite is everything from Salesforce automation, lead to customer management, customer support and case management, and marketing with e-commerce overview. Because this is such an expansive CRM system, um, we had to break this into a two-part series. So today we will focus on marketing, campaigns, upsell, sales rules and commissions. And on July 17th, we will have another one, uh, part two series, which will focus on forecasts and pipeline reports, customer support, marketing campaign assistance, 
and then the lead to customer and estimate to SO process. So with all that being said, I'm going to jump into the actual system and we'll have some fun now. As you can see, I've gone to NetSuite and I've logged into my system and I've logged in today as a US Marketing and Sales Manager to begin. So what we're gonna start with today is marketing automation. And just to give you guys an idea of where we're at, this is our dashboard that's pretty standard for marketing and sales managers. If you're not familiar with the navigation of NetSuite, I'll try and speak to that as I go through this. But on our dashboard up here to the top right, we have our navigation portlet. And again, this is for marketing. This can be customized for any of the roles. But it gives us a lot of shortcuts to all the things that we're going to need to see and deal with as a sales manager or a marketing manager. If we scroll down over here to the left, we have a KPI field uh, or dashlet set up, and this is our key performance indicators. So again, this is highly customizable. As you can see, it gives you kind of quick glimpse of our new leads, where we're at versus last month. It even can tell us our website hits this month versus last month. So a lot of good stuff on here that again, you can customize to make sure it's what you wanna see on a daily basis. If I scroll down some more, you're gonna see some of these KPI meters. And these we can also add in or change to determine what we wanna see. <clears throat> but this gives us an overall view of our marketing campaigns by category, total cost, expected revenue, actual revenue, and ROI all in real time. The first thing we need to set up when we talk about setting up our campaigns and our overall marketing strategy we'd like to set up target customer groups. This allows us to segment our customers through dynamic and static grouping. So we can create new customer groups based on things like purchase history criteria um, from items purchased, maybe purchase dates or amounts that you purchase. Um, and these groups can then be targeted with emails and direct marketing campaigns and events. So in order to do that, we'll come up and use that navigation portlet and we'll start by defining a customer group. And just to give us an idea of what these look like, I'll just come down and we'll open up the record of customers who purchased iPads. So in this record, this is a dynamic customer group. It means it's constantly changing and updating. Um, so let me talk about that for just a moment. There's two ways to create customer groups. Of course, that's the static and then the group members remain the same no matter when you come back to it. You can also do a dynamic or create a dynamic group and that's what we're looking at now. And this means that the members will be updated in real time based on the conditions that we set. So the more profitable customers and the, the repeat business, um, those you can keep up with and just make sure you got your eyes on things at all times. The group members down here at the bottom, if we scroll down, all group members are displayed with their associated contact information. The application is flexible and you can tailor these fields to just show the most relevant information to your marketing team. We jump over to our campaign subtab. Again, this is all relevant to this customer group that we set up. The campaign subtab displays all the marketing campaigns that are targeting these customers. So this allows for transparency across the team to create an integrated marketing approach. We want to be smart with how we continue the relationship with our customers. We don't want to oversell or shoot out too many emails. So this really gives us one place in the visibility to make sure we, we have a full understanding of our interactions. The next thing we're going to do now that we've set up our customer group is go back and talk about the marketing campaigns themselves. So we'll hit our home button here. And this will bring us back to our dashboard. We're going to go back to that navigation portlet and navigate to campaigns under campaign setup. So campaign records are used to manage all the information that's important to your marketing efforts. And on the campaign record, you can set the time and date events are set, select the recipient groups, enter the overhead costs, and add 
information about your campaign that's important to your company is reported. You can schedule individual campaign events to represent different parts of the same campaign, or you can track the campaign without separate events, whatever works for you. So I'm going to come down and select one of these just so we can take a look at the record, and we'll view this WD sales, seasonal sales promotion. So as we come into this record, we're going to have our primary campaign information at the top, and that's just a summary of of everything, your description, your start end date, costs and revenues projections, and just gives you a quick synopsis of the campaign. If we come down into campaign events, this is our first tab down here. You can see that there's sub-tabs associated with this as well. In our email sub-tab, we see there are monthly specials for summer and spring that target specific customer groups. You can also see that specific promotion codes are linked individually to each event. This is over here. Um, our statistics subtab, it's always a fun one. This subtab gives you a quick snapshot of the campaign's current performance. And here you can track the ROI, cost per purchaser, and other key metrics. Now I want to talk a little bit more about measuring the campaign performance. And that's it. So I'll go back to my home screen. And we're going to go back to that navigation portlet. You notice we're kind of going back to the same place to navigate everywhere in the system, which is just a very nice tool. NetSuite's powerful reporting provides detailed performance analysis on marketing campaigns. So we're going to look at two reports now, um, just to show an idea of, of what those will look like for you. We're going to start by looking at our campaign ROI. And as we open it up, just another basic note in NetSuite, we can come down here and customize the dates very quickly. Just hit refresh and everything will repopulate in real time. Um, we can also expand on our columns and condense them. And we can also go in you can go into the record and drill down from our report. Now I'm going to go back and look at a navigate, how to navigate by sales promotion and marketing. Um, but again, just the overall idea of how our campaigns are work, campaigns are working, and the um, in this report is a nice quick place to go and really get an overall view for, through the whole system of your marketing. So we'll go back now <clears throat> and navigate to our sales by promotion. And that's, again, up in our navigating port left. So it's self-explanatory. This is going to be our sales by promotion. Um, and again, just like the other reports, we can change our views can view details and drill down from there. So now I'd like to go back and talk about how we upsell to existing customers. And in order to do that, we're going to actually create an upsell template. So just like before, as we navigate back home, we'll go into our upsell manager. And this is under setup. And all of this is going to kind of tie together at the end so you can see that everything kind of works together within the marketing system. So the upsell manager enables you to maximize your sales and marketing efforts by determining which items or item categories prevent a good, present a good upsell opportunity and which customers you should target. So let's uh, review a common scenario and see how powerful this tool can really be. So we're going to select based on items to upsell and hit next. And now we'll need to select some items for clearance. So let's say that, for example, our marketing manager, Alex, was just told that the business will be strategically moving away from selling a lower margin building material over the next six months. And responding to this, he wants to plan a push uh, to get the, the remaining inventory out. 
So we're going to select items to upsell here. And by doing, to do that, we're going to click on our down arrow. And just for this example, we'll come down and select building materials, circuit breaker, and hinge screw, and click done. So the upsell manager allows us to ensure that we are getting the most relevant customers for this group with upsell criteria that can then be adjusted on correlation and count. This means that based on customer purchase history, there's a likelihood that they would also buy the items we've targeted for upsell. So we're going to now set the correlation and count numbers uh, low to ensure that we get plenty of history matches. So we're going to set our correlation to 5% and our count number to 2. Now we're going to hit search. And based on our upsell criteria, now we now get a number of items purchased. The items purchased that is related to the items we wish to upsell. We can accept as many of these related items as, as we want, but we're going to go ahead and select them all by just hitting mark all, and then we're going to hit next. So all of our information is now saved into a customer query, and we'll hit next again. Our marketing manager is now given a list of all the customers that are a match for our two items based on the customer's purchase history. And all of the listed customers have purchased an item that has a statistical correlation in purchasing occurrence to the building materials we selected. And this group is much more likely to purchase the items that we're going after. We're going to hit next. We'll leave all of those selected. And we can now take a number of actions, including creating a group, creating tasks for sales reps to upsell the items to customers or schedule outbound phone calls. We're going to create a new group called Customers to Upsell Building Materials. And this will give Alex a specific group of customers that are likely to respond to his marketing efforts. So to do this, we're going to check the box next to Create a Group of Customers to Upsell. And in our group name, we'll put customers to upsell. Now we're going to just come down and click finish. OK, so we've done that one before. We'll just go customers to upsell. And notice that it did tell us, hey, you do already have something submitted there. So it did not let us create a duplicate record. OK, so now we have confirmation that we have our upsell record created. We can access it quickly from here. Or we can just go back to our home screen. So to take everything, uh, all the marketing components so far that we've gone over, our new group can now be associated with a campaign and that has a promotion link to it. And our marketing manager can send out emails or direct mail to customers based on our customer information in the list we created. The marketing manager can then measure the performance of the campaign and the ROI of all of the marketing efforts. Okay, so now we're going to go in and talk about sales teams. So we're going to stay in this role. And we're going to go to setup up here in our menu bar, sales and marketing automation, and sales roles. And we'll click on the West Coast rule. So just to give you a little background on how you'll be using these, sales rules are a flexible way to determine how incoming leads are routed to sales representatives. And you can use any number of fields to trigger one of these rules. 
In this example, we're going to see that any incoming lead from the state of Washington or from a state in the western part of the U.S. will be automatically routed to the representative assigned to the western territory. So, we're going to go to the assignment subtab once we click on the edit. And I'm so sorry, I am on the wrong screen. We'll go back. And we'll just have to say that we're missing this part of the menu, so I'm going to have to go in and grant some role permissions. Um, moving on and knowing that I'll put that on next next time's webinar on part two, uh, let's talk about commissions. So commission schedules are a fundamental tool to incentivize high performance at top sales teams, and NetSuite's flexibility allows you to organize and construct the incentive plan that works best to motivate your team. So as we'll see, the system allows you design, to design complex, multi-tiered commission plans while still remaining transparent and comprehensible. Also, commissions are seamlessly integrated with NetSuite's accounting and payroll features. And when deals are entered, commission is automatically calculated by the system. So you do not have to work with complicated spreadsheets or input data between applications. So again, we're going to stay in our marketing and sales manager role. And we're going to go to our commission setup and our shortcut squirtlet. Um, just to talk for a moment about our shortcut portlet, it's down here at the bottom. We, of course, could change the location. But this is going to be kind of like a favorites menu. So everything that you want to quickly access, you can access down here. And it is, of course, again, very easily customizable. So we'll go into commission setup. And going over the commissions, our commissions paid by default here you can specify the exact basis on which you want the system to calculate commissions. Um, commissions can be calculated based on billings and bookings, collections, or any mix of the two. And this allows you to tailor these calculations specifically to your business. Commission el eligibility period, this allows you to specify exactly how many days uh, must elapse after billing or payment depending on default selection, and before the sale is eligible for commission. And this helps protect your organization from overpayment or unreliable commission. In default employee commission expense account, this allows you to specify exactly what account will track all the commissions. So now that we have the default parameters for commissions uh, calculation and payment, the business can now define specific commission plans to assist employees. And these individual plans allow for total flexibility and exactly how you compensate each employee. So we're going to click the Home button and return back to the dashboard. And we'll go back down to that shortcut panel and click on Employee Commission Plans <clears throat> and our shortcut panel. Uh, panel. So in here, we're going to select the plan named Percent Sales and Warranty Kicker. And we'll take a look at this. OK, so what we're looking at, we have schedules in plan in this tab down here. This subtab displays all of the commission schedules that are used to calculate total commission for the plan, to investigate the specifics on a calculation method or rules on any of these schedules, you can easily drill down into the plan with one click. And this, again, gives total visibility on how commissions are calculated for the plan. Going back, we have our sales reps on plan. And here we can easily view every employee that is eligible 
to be compensated under this specific plan across the entire organization. We now go to transaction calculations. This subtab displays a recent history of actual monetary calculations for commission payments to sales reps assigned to the plan. So this gives the sales manager and executives real-time visibility into the current rate of sales incentive compensation. So now that we've seen the way commissions are set up and calculated, let's take a look at how our sales rep, Alex, has been compensated. In order to do this, we don't need to dig for a report. We can simply go to his employee record for full visibility and to his commission compensation. His employee record is easily accessed through the search function and there's no need to click around. Um, I'm going to speak briefly as I do this on the global search and NetSuite. This is one of my favorite things. As I start to type in, I'm, I want to find an employee record. So I'm just going to start typing employee. And I don't have to fully type out the entire thing. I'm telling the system I want to see an employee record. And I start typing the name. And there it is. So the global search in NetSuite is incredibly useful, uh, a quick and easy way to be able to navigate to a page or a record or form, anything you need to get to. Transactions function the same way if you're looking for a sales order or, um, or a purchase order. OK, so we have now navigated to our employee record. And we're going to click the Related Transactions sub-tab in Alex's record. As it's loading down here, we've already selected the type to of commission and the view of default. Okay, so here is all of his commission type records. We can change that and look at journal records, but we'll just pull one of these up to give a look. And this is just a quick example of NetSuite's ability to integrate across your business. So you can see the commission record right here. And while Alex has his employee information and traditionally just would be related in his employee record um, to HR things, this is an example again of how not only HR information is related, but NetSuite lets you look across the entire system and quickly relate his commissions and other things that normally um, wouldn't be related in, in a CRM ERP. So it's a huge benefit of the system. OK, so now I'm going to navigate back home. And from our shortcut portlet again, we will navigate down to the Employee Commission's Overview. <clears throat> Again, down here we can change our date for the date range we, we wish to have. And with a single click, our sales manager can get a high-level overview of all of the commission payments on this report uh, over any period of time. This gives instant perspective to how these incentive plans are working, who's performing well, and who's lagging behind. Now that we've gone through the marketing campaigns, the ROIs, the setup and structure, I just want to take you back in where we started and talk a little bit more about our dashboards and dashlets. So if you did want to customize your dashboard or add additional dashlets here, it's simple on your personalized dashboard link in your top right corner. You can add trend graphs, snapshots, and our standard content that's built in. So you can add in a custom portlet, a quick search, quick ads for things like leads, which we'll show you in our next segment. And of course, news release and login audits, which allows you to track the login time. Um, down here, we close this up, we have a reminder. So as a marketing manager or sales manager, when I come in, I can configure these reminders 
to remind me of any of these activities in the system that I might need to keep up with on a daily basis. Directly from here, I know I have one campaign to email. I can click on this link and go directly to the activity and execute the actions I need to make. So this is a wonderful way of keeping up with your tasks um, related to marketing. You also have our reports down here, which can sum up our campaign by profitability. Again, we can set this up for different criteria based on what we'd like to see. And these can be set by custom searches as well, uh, or reports that you create in NetSuite and then allow those, those to populate. So everything is highly customizable here. And again, down here, we have a list of our promotions. So a quick view of what you would need to see on a daily basis, quick ways to get there without having to navigate through the entire system. And I know we're a few minutes early because I had a tiny glitch that I will address next time. Um, but again, our next, next session, part two, we'll be covering forecast and pipeline reports. We'll be covering setting up the rest of those sales territories we saw earlier uh, or started after we set our sales rules. Customer support will be covered, the marketing campaign assistance, and lead to customer or estimate to SO processes. So you can see how quickly um, NetSuite automatically converts leads to prospects and customers and et cetera. Um, with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Joanne and open it up for uh, any questions. All right, thank you. Let's see. All right, can you see my screen, Jennifer? Yes, I can. Perfect, all right. Um, thank you so much for the presentation, and uh, as Jennifer mentioned, we just have a couple of quick follow-up items, and then we'll move to the question and answer section of the webcast. So please feel free to send in your questions through the GoToWebinar console at this time. Our webcast today is part of GSI's free, ongoing educational webcast series. Our upcoming webcasts are listed on the screen, and you can find the entire schedule on our website at getgsi.com forward slash webcasts. If you would be interested in receiving weekly email reminders about our upcoming webcasts or to receive our monthly newsletter, the GSI Insider, go out to www.getgsi.com and you can find a link for each at the bottom of the screen. And with that, that takes us to the question and answer section of the webcast. Um, please feel free to send your questions in at this time. If you minimized your console earlier, you can click the left arrow to redisplay the questions panel. Just give people a couple of, of minutes. Is there anything else that you wanted to cover, Jennifer? Um, you know, today uh, I think we'll wrap it up, and I will make sure to have everything working on that roll glitch by next time. Okay, perfect. So I'll just give uh, one more minute for anybody who wants to, to um, ask any questions about the material that was presented today. And as a follow-up to today's webcast, uh, we do ask that you complete a short one-minute survey when you exit the webcast. And when you fill that out, you'll be entered to, into a drawing to win a $50 Amazon gift card. Uh, you'll also receive an email with a link to our resource center where you can access the recording from today's webcast as well as a PDF copy of the presentation. By registering for the resource center, you will also have access to any of our past recorded webinars, uh, white papers, and more. All right. Well, it doesn't look like there were any questions today, Jennifer, but thank you so much uh, to everyone for joining, and thank you, Jennifer, for a great presentation. Thank you so much, Joanne. Everyone have a wonderful day. All right. Bye-bye.